I've been lucky enough to use dozens of high-end chairs, so coming up with my list of the best options under $1,000 wasn't easy. For this price, you should expect a high-end chair, but unfortunately, due to recent inflation, $1,000 will no longer get you into the top chairs from all of the best manufacturers, but you can get close. Expect to find second-tier options from top brands like Herman Miller and Steelcase, and you will also see some of the highest-end import brands in this price range as well. I think the fully loaded Steelcase EMEA is the most well-rounded, safest chair by under $1,000. It just does so many things really well without any really stark downsides. It has the most comfortable seat on this list, aside from maybe my final pick. It has a good amount of padding to make it feel soft, but it is still firm enough to provide good support. The backrest has a great natural curve along with Steelcase's live back technology and height adjustable lumbar support. I also like that it has a higher back design compared to the regeneration and sale that we will see later in this list. For me, the EMEA has the most comfortable back in this price range. You also get arguably the best arms, aside from maybe my final pick. Steelcase is known for their arms, and the EMEA is a great example why. They have four-way adjustment, and the ranges are huge. The arm pads are also super comfortable. They are spacious, have no hard edges, and are soft to the touch. You also get a nice synchro tilt recline motion and an upright locking position. You do not have multiple locking positions on the EMEA, which is the one noticeable thing missing from an adjustment standpoint, but the responsive tension control helps to make up for that. The Eurotech IOO is one of the high-end import chairs I mentioned in the beginning. This chair sells for just under $1,000, and you can get the headrest edition for slightly over that $1,000 mark. My favorite thing about the IOO is going to be its massive recline range. This chair goes back further than almost any chair I have ever used. The backrest is very supportive, but the lumbar support is quite pronounced. It's actually a little too pronounced for my preferences, but this is a great choice for people that are really looking for a lot of lumbar. One thing to think about with the backrest and recline is that you cannot sit straight up in the IOO. It always has a little bit of a tilt. This is one reason why the chair is not ideal for me in tasking, but it works much better in a more relaxed setting. The seat is well padded and comfortable, and the arms have four-way adjustment, but they do slide a bit more than I would prefer. The Regeneration Chair by Noel was a surprisingly comfortable chair for me. I really didn't think it would be that great after seeing pictures and videos, but this chair does not disappoint. It's just a really solid chair. The seat has a firm design, but it's well padded, and I find it to be quite comfortable. I also think the backrest is great. The rubber-like material is soft and flexible. It really conforms to my body and gives the backrest nice flexibility. It doesn't have an extra lumbar support system, but I don't find that to be an issue. The natural curve provides me with plenty of lower back support. The arms on our regeneration aren't great just because we have the basic height adjustable arms. The pads are okay, but they are really small and lack adjustability, which is definitely not ideal. I would highly recommend getting the fully adjustable arms, and I wish we had done so. The chair will still be well under $1,000 with that add-on. If our regeneration had the fully adjustable arms, I would definitely be able to use this chair as a daily driver. My one gripe with the regeneration is the recline. It has the hip thrust recline with only upright lock. It works fine for tasking, but I don't like this recline, especially for relaxed settings. The sale is a mid-range chair in the Herman Miller lineup, but recent price hikes have put the chair near that $1,000 price point when you get it fully loaded, which I would recommend. This is just kind of an upgraded regeneration with more adjustments. It shares a similar back design with the rubber-like material, but you do get a HUD adjustable lumbar support system. It's not super pronounced though, so if you like a lot of lumbar, this may not be the best choice. The back also isn't great for tall people because you will feel the top of the backrest on your shoulders. I'm 5'9 and don't have this problem, so I think the back is comfortable, but people over 5'11 probably want to look elsewhere. The sail has a nice synchro tilt recline action with five limiter positions. The range isn't huge, but it has a comfortable motion and I like the different limiter positions they give you. You also get a great arm package. The four-way adjustments all have nice ranges and the arm caps are soft and squishy. Overall, this is a well-built, good all-around chair if it fits you properly. My final pick is the Hayworth Zodi, and if I had to choose between any chair on this list, I would probably go with the Zodi over the EMEA by a tiny margin. 
From a build quality standpoint, the Zodi is at the top of this list. The chair is solid, and I find it to be really comfortable. It has a thicker seat than most high-end chairs, which makes it one of the softest options in this price range. It is not so soft, though, that you sink into it and lose out on proper support. I think the back is really comfortable as well. The plastic backrest design gives the chair good flexibility, and I find the mesh to have a good amount of elasticity so that you don't sink into it and feel the frame. The lumbar support is also super unique. You get a huge height range, and you can also control the tension individually on each side of your back. This chair may also have the best arms on the list when you upgrade to the four-way option, which I would highly recommend. A recent price increase puts this package at just over $1,000, but I think it is well worth the additional charge. Similar to the EMEA, you get huge ranges on all four adjustments, plus really comfortable arm caps. They are large and really squishy. The one major factor that may make the Zodi a deal breaker is the recline function. It has an interesting system where it offers two modes of recline, one very forward position and then a forced recline position. This design can make some people feel like they can't find the exact position they want, which is one major reason why people in our office have not liked the Zodi. I do not find this to be a problem for me. I just use the forward position and then adjust the tension so I can lean back a bit, but I would think about how you use your chair before deciding on the Zodi chair. I hope this video was helpful to learn if any of these sub thousand dollar chairs will work for you. If not, and you want to find something a little bit more budget friendly, check out the next list where we look at the best chairs under $500.